presume that met projectors are set up. No, there's not even, no, there's nothing. I don't have to ask prior. Um, well, let me wait till, well, I can talk a little bit. Um, so the general concept here is there's plausible predictions that humans will be dead in 10 years as a species. And whether that is true or not, it's coming into the, into the media, both print media and internet, that this is so. And that is going to start mass population reactions to this anxiety. So I myself cannot decide if this is uh, a very likely prediction or not. I think the next two years will tell us how fast this global warming is going to be. But as I said, whether or not it's so whether or not it's true, the fear and anxiety and the reactions to that are going to start hitting the population. Um, so the title is Mass Population Grief Reactions as Climate Collapse Ends All Narratives. And what I meant here is, so I'm giving you the conclusions first. Our civilization and actually our persons run on narratives. So I have an idea of who Floyd Rudman is. I know my past biography. I've got a lot of myths and lies mixed in with that narrative. I imagine how this is going into the future. I'm an academic, so I write papers that go into an archive. So even when I'm dead, I know I'm going to exist in these archives and people can cite me 20 or 50 years from now. So in some ways, Plato and Nietzsche are not dead. We're still reading Nietzsche. So his words are alive, he's immortal. Why do we academics a bit think like this? Um, and then we have these family narratives. So I do genealogy. So I know my family lineage goes from the past into the future. I've got children, grandchildren that's going to go into the future. We have this. And then we have national narratives. So we have our citizenship. We know our nation's history. It's got, again, it's got truths and myths mixed into the history. But we have this narrative and we project it going into the future. And then we have these religious narratives, as God is dead. And he's just talking about the crisis in Western civilization as we secularized and modernize. That this narrative about God terminates for many people um, by the modernity events, so the sciences and the uh, rational thinking. Those are all narratives, and they're, as we come to human extinction, they're all going to end. And just that grief, so Kubler-Ross has a theory of grief reaction. So when your doctor says to you, you or your loved one has got terminal cancer or terminal illness, you're going to be dead in two months, right? The reactions are, Denial, that's not true. Then we'll bargain, I'll do some things. Then I get really angry, and then you have acceptance. So those are three, three categories of reaction uh, on Raw. So that's again a medical metaphor, a medical metaphor that relates to the previous paper. So we're still on the, uh, now the first summary, on the first summary page. So, Carbon in the atmosphere is accelerating. One source of carbon in the atmosphere is humans burning fossil fuels, gasoline and coal and oil. But now methane is another carbon gas that's also a climate warming. And that's now coming out of the ocean and the soils on its own independent of us. Forest fires now are happening. Like I was looking for current events there's big forest fires in Laos. Last year, in March, Canada had an enormous forest fire that burned um, the town in Alberta where the oil tar sands, Fort McMurray. 
Canadian forest fires are August events, July and August. So a March forest fire already is rare. And that was the biggest forest fire, uh, it was the biggest natural catastrophe Canada ever had in terms of cost, whole, whole city burn. Then the, um, the ocean is satiated now with CO2. So much of the CO2 we've been producing is being sunk into the oceans. And the oceans now are hitting satiation. This CO2 in the ocean turns into carbonic acid, which actually starts killing algae. So the ocean is acidifying, and that's killing algae. And algae are the greatest source of photosynthesis, turning carbon back into oxygen. So we've just lost, we're losing one of our biggest motors of recovery. In addition to carbon, in addition to carbon, as the climate warms, it holds more height, more water, and water also is a climate warming gas. So now we have carbon and methane and H2O up in the atmosphere warming us. And as this warms up, the Arctic is melting, so a, a massive surface of the planet used to be white and reflecting sunlight heat back into space, that's now melting and the blue ocean absorbs heat, it doesn't reflect it. So we're having accelerators. Um, okay, go to, uh, um, page one, on uh, 2013. So what I was going to point out is that there's, this is a, appearing and has been appearing in literature uh, for a number of years. So in 2013, there's a major article in Mother Jones with the title, Thoughts on Global he Heating and Human Extinction. So this author interviewed several clients, climate scientists who said we've already passed tripwires. We're on our way to extinction, to runaway climate change. You go to the next page in the handout, page two, Oh, I should mention, that article had a timeline of, so that was a 2014 article, 2013 article made a timeline of how these predictions of climate change. So in 2007, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change said, we're going to get one degree by the year 2100. And I and most people sort of think that's what we're talking about. One or two degrees in a hundred years. And it'll change things, but it's not a catastrophe. That's, I think, most of the populations on that kind of a scale. But in 2008, a, a meteorological center said, no, it's going to be two degrees by 2100. And in 2009, a UN uh, environment program said, no, it's going to be 3.5 degrees by 2100. Then later on in October, uh, Another meteorologi meteorological institute prediction is, no, it's going to be 4 degrees by 2060. And then in 2009, later in that year, uh, two different groups, the Global Carbon Project and the Copenhagen Diagnosis Group, said, no, it's going to be 6 or 7 degrees by 2100. Then in 2010, the United Nations, it's going to be 5 degrees by 2050. So you can see we're getting more and more heat sooner and sooner in all of these predictions. 2012, the IEA said, no, we're going to get two degrees by 2017. So we now are 2017, and we're not at two degrees, but 2017 isn't over. And the International Energy Agency said, no, 3.5 degrees by 2030, 2035. So these predictions of what's already coming is more heat faster than we originally were talking about, right? Um, when I was looking for recent events, 2014 was the hottest year in human history. Then 2015 was the hottest year in human history. And 2016 then was the hottest year in human history. And 2017 is on course to become the hottest year in human history. We're getting four years in a row of the hottest years in human history. So this is, if you have a, a stable thing with some variation, you don't get four in a row going too high. 
Then 2014, uh, this was in the Sydney Morning Herald, an Australian paper. Climate change could make humans extinct, warns health expert. Now these are the dean, this is the dean of the health sciences at University of Canberra. And uh, what she's predicting here is the last lost food crops. So humans actually depend on relatively few species of food. Half of all human calories come from three grains. Half comes from rice, corn, and wheat. Right? These plants themselves have tolerances of what they can take in terms of heat. Um, and she's predicting that when we get to certain high temperatures, we're going to lose our grain crops, which are the source of human food. Then in 2015, where are we? Okay, this was in science. Accelerating extinction risk from climate change. This was an interesting study where they combined 131 studies of biologists predicting how many species will die as the climate warms. And I didn't realize there's so many. 131 different studies got amalgamated. And they put a graph there of what it shows. So when you get to three and four degrees, look up across the bottom of the graph, when you get to three and four degrees above baseline, you start getting up to 30% of the species being extinct. That's all species, right? When you get to five degrees, one study came up with 50% of all species. So humans, we are a species. The average species lives about a million years. That's the average of species. Humans in our present form have been around about 200,000 as a homo sapien. So we're only, we're young as a species. Uh, yeah, we, we should have another 800,000, but we're terminating ourselves early. Then uh, 2015 also there was an article in National Geographic. Will humans survive the sixth great extinction? Again, there's extinction in the title, National Geographic. 2016, there was an article in another science journal. Crop failure and failing food supplies, climate change is a lasting impact. And this is where they mention how very few grain sources we have actually for human calories. Um, 2016, there was an article, a uh, report by the University of New South Wales, Mass Extinction and Climate Change. It was in the science journal called The Con Conversation. Uh, we now are adding carbon faster than has been recorded in geological history. Um, Ten times faster than the last great carbon ex extinction. So carbon has come into the atmosphere in, the, in past geological time, mostly from volcanoes. Uh, you have a sudden eruption of a lot of volcanoes, you get a lot of carbon in the atmosphere. But this is unprecedented the rates. We are now adding three parts per million per year of carbon to our atmosphere. They had a graph of methane. So this, was a, this is a very interesting chart. So from ice cores, you can get records of 800,000 years of atmosphere. What's been in the atmosphere for the past 800,000 years? And the bottom code on this, so the, the left axis is methane. And methane is measured in parts per billion. So that's this graph right here. Historically, for 800,000 years, we were running between 500 and 750 parts per billion methane in the atmosphere. Bang, we're now at 1,800 parts per billion methane. We are um, more than double the long historical average of methane in the atmosphere. The Carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide is measured on the other axis in parts per million. Historically, we ran around, oh, I'm sorry, I made this one. The bottom graph is uh, parts per 
Remember, so the right axis is carbon dioxide parts per million. Historically, we were running 100 to 150. We're now at 400 parts per million. So we're four times over the historic average of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That paper also mentioned the past rate extinctions. So abrupt climate warming has happened several times in the last 56 million years. Uh, there was one that was called the Paleocene Thermal Maximum. It was the largest mass extinction of sea life that ever happened. That was caused by five to eight degrees warming over a thousand years. We are now getting predictions of five to eight degrees warming in four or five decades. Right? So we have these mass extinctions happening. The next one is uh, 2016. This is from the Independent, the British newspaper. Climate change may be escalating so fast it's game over. And here they're predicting that if we get to seven degrees, essentially we're extinct. Um, and they mentioned Donald Trump there. 2070, we have another one. What we'll lose to climate change, what we'll lose to climate change in 2017. You thought 2016 was a bad year. This is an, a, a very informative graph on 2017. This is from a site called the Arctic Blog where they compile atmospheric data from Arctic. Uh, and much of this is using U.S. government data from NASA or from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And here, across the bottom, they tabulate up sources of global warming. Um, so, already the climate has risen from 1750 to 1900 was a third of a degree. From, 20, from 1900 to 2016, it's 1.6 degrees. So we're almost <coughs> approaching this two degrees upper limit. Uh, then our emissions between 2016 and 2021 are going to add a half a degree. Then the falling away of the aerosol effect is going to be 2.5. Now, the aerosol effect is entering. It's actually a cooling phenomenon. Remember the speaker yesterday says if we have a nuclear war, we're going to have a, win our, we're going to have a winter, a permanent winter? Because a nuclear bomb puts enormous amounts of dirt up in the atmosphere, high. And that's a masking effect. That re that's reflecting heat out. But that, that is not a gas. Those are particles. And they sink back down, but it takes a while. So there was a, a volcano eruption in the 1880s at Krakatoa in Indonesia. Essentially, a whole mountain blew up into the sky. And that caused severe winters. For example, Lake Winnipesaukee in New Hampshire didn't thaw that year. Like they had ice in the summer. So there was a, a, a kind of mini winter from one gigantic volcano putting a lot of stuff up in the atmosphere. And then we have sea. We have uh, 1.6 degrees is from the loss of reflective ice. Uh, 1.1 degree is more methane coming out of the ocean. Uh, and 2.1 degrees, all of this water vapor in the atmosphere also is a climate warming gas. So they said already we're adding up to 10 degrees. You just literally add up these projections. So. On this graph, it's probably too small for you to read, but I just listed a whole lot more articles from 2017, from February to May, where the titles talk about extinction. Um, we have these uh, various ones you can read them. So it, the point I'm making from the review I just did of these headlines, and this set of headlines, it's in the media that we humans are heading for extinction. Um, and whether that's true or not, people are going to start getting reactions to that at, at a mass population level. So I might looking for some recent events. So this is things in the last month. So number one, a recent warning event came up. If you remember, there was a big snowstorm at the end of April. 
caused tornadoes in around the uh, Mississippi area. It caused enormous floods up in Quebec. It was a storm that came across. At the start of this storm, it dropped a lot of snow in Colorado, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska. The winter wheat, that's winter wheat crop area. Because the winter had been mild, the wheat crop actually was advanced. It was like two to four weeks ahead of schedule. And then we got this late snowstorm that crushed this wheat. So the U.S. winter wheat crop has been damaged. This is a graph of the... When that storm happened, the price futures in wheat jumped. There's going to be a shortage of wheat this year from one snowstorm in one country, right? Now, we get wheat from United States, Canada, Australia, Argentina, Russia, Ukraine, like as many places growing it, so this won't cause mass starvation. But it's showing how unstable weather starts to damage these crops. Another warning event, number two. This is May 4. Big forest fires in Laos. Laos is a tropical country. They have jungles, right? But it's burning. And you can see this from space. And what was interesting is CO2 measured by satellites over that storm it spiked to 600 parts per million. Right? We have an activist group in the United States called 350.org. They're the political activists on climate change. What is this 350? 350 is, that's the amount of carbon we can take and keep a stable atmosphere. We're already at 403, right? And over a big forest fire, it gets into 600. Like, we're, we're dumping carbon massively. I went to a lecture in Canada at one point of a, talking about uh, the North Shore of Alaska. And the speaker about, it was about biology in the North Shore. And the speaker, as an aside, mentioned there was a forest fire there in 1997, the late 90s, that dumped more carbon into the atmosphere than all of the forests of Siberia and Canada take up. And what had happened is, in the uh, Arctic areas of Alaska, Canada, Siberia, the soil is actually a kind of peat. So this fire was burning down four feet into the soil. Like the soil was on fire. And you cannot put those out. Like they burn and they burn and they burn. And all of that carbon went up into the atmosphere. More than, if you look at the map, there's a lot of forests in Canada, Siberia, Alaska. And that put more carbon than all those forests can take out. Here's another warning event. This happened in May 9. Now the glaciers of Greenland are melting. I worked for 20 years in Arctic Norway at the University of Tromsø. Okay, five minutes. Every year they have a conference called Arctic Frontiers with a theme to it. This is a one-week science conference. Around 2005, the theme was the Greenland Glacier. So this is a week of science papers, multiple sessions like this, poster sessions, maybe 500 scientists, all who study the Greenland ice sheet. And I was attending these, and the conclusion is, it's going to melt. The only issue is when, like how fast. And every projection, so they can measure Greenland ice mass from satellites. Every projection anyone's made of the rate of Greenland ice melting, the actual melting is going faster than the projections. Mm -hmm. So all of our projections are underestimating what's happening. Mm -hmm. As that ice melts, it takes enormous weight off the underlying Earth crust, which causes earthquakes. So this event was, there's earthquakes now around Greenland. And the floor bed around Greenland are frozen methane. When this earth shakes, it destabilizes these methane crystals and they pop up into the atmosphere. The gas comes up. So there was an enormous jump in Arctic methane. It went to almost 2,000 parts per billion. 
over that over that earthquake at that time. So we're having these. Here's May 7, another, re this is current stuff, another recent event. This is showing global ice mass. So this is plotting how much ice there is in, in 10 to the 6 square kilometers. So this is it's a huge, it's measuring both Arctic and Antarctic ice. And as you can see, you have these plot lines starting in 17, 1978, how much ice is there on the planet per month. And they just draw these lines across. The gray area is two standard deviations of the average. So if you know statistics, when you're, out of, when you're outside of two standard deviations, you're into very rare, uh, unusual events. This line right here was last year. Now if you notice, there's been, there's normally historically, in November, a big recovery of ice mass on the planet. That's as the Arctic is freezing and the Antarctic yet hasn't started unfreezing. So November is a high point in planetary ice mass. Last year it didn't recover. This line right here is, you didn't, that's last year. This line right here is this year. So last year was catastrophe, and we're already dramatically less ice than last year. So there are people saying possibly we have an ice-free Arctic sometime in August this year. There'll be no ice in the Arctic Ocean. That's possible. Now, mental already the APA is saying that climate change is causing mental health problems. And what they were talking about in their, their report was when a big flood hits, hits New Orleans, or a tornado destroys a town in the Midwest, people have emotional reaction to that, they lost the property, some people die, they lose their photographs, and so their family lives are disrupted, and they have PTSD. So this is about, the APA was talking about PTSD from dramatic climate events. But what I'm predicting is as this idea of human extinction gets into the population, that's going to cause anxieties. And all of the psychodynamic methods of coping with anxiety, to, coping with anxiety, start to, will be starting to happen on a population basis. So there will be denial. So when people say, oh, Trump and his crew and, and Red States America are deniers, you might say, well, that's, a normal reaction humans have when they're told they're going towards a fatalistic event. That's not, it's a, a predictable way to cope with the anxiety of this, right? Um, so you might say, or the next stage in Kubla Ross's theory of grief is you do bargaining. Sure, I, I bought a Prius and we're planting two trees on our lawn. Like we're gonna, we're going to hold it off by we're bargaining. It'd be like someone with terminal cancer says, I'll start jogging, and I'll, I'll improve my diet and take vitamins, right? It's, it's probably not going to work, but you want to do something to put this off. Um, and of course, at the end of Kubler rosss theory, you have acceptance. OK. And there are already people saying, get used to it, accept it. There are people living today who will see the end of the human race, the human species. And it's unavoidable, stop struggling, uh, live life to its fullest. So we have this carpe diem kind of philosophy coming up, which I think will make things worse. Right? So, but again, that's a normal reaction to having a fatalistic. Okay.